I'm Dr. Brett Osborne, board certified neurosurgeon, nutrition specialist, and featured BPI sports expert. I hear a lot of people talking about potential liver damage that happens in a long-term ketogenic state. So let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, um, there are these um, rare cases of people developing um, issues with their liver, um, pancreatitis, et cetera, et cetera, from the uh, markedly, marked, um, markedly elevated uh, dietary fats that are consumed during a ketogenic diet. But I will tell you that these are uh, rare complications. I also get questions um, on social media, et cetera, et cetera, via emails about uh, people um, that have had cholecystectomy, so their gallbladder is taken out. Right. Um, and um, ketogenic diets, classically, traditional ketogenic and, and, diets. And explain to people real quick uh, that don't know what the function of the gallbladder is so they understand the correlation between that and a high-fat diet. Right. So the gallbladder, or, or bile, I should say, bile is, um, in addition to... Um, the pancreas, uh, those organs, one of their many functions is to process, break down, if you will, um, dietary fats. If you don't have, obviously, if you don't have a pancreas, you have to supplement with, um, with, uh, or if you've had pancreatitis, you're going to have an issue uh, processing dietary fats, digesting dietary fats, and the same thing if you don't have um, uh, your liver. But by no means does that mean you can't be on a ketogenic diet. So my typical response is, look, just go and get some digestive enzymes. And typically, they're very, very, it's very, very well tolerated thereafter. So I always recommend 15 minutes before your meal, take some digestive enzymes and split up your dietary fat. So if you're having 100 grams of fat a day, right. split it up into five meals. So most of the health concerns that people are talking about are related just to the fact that it's a high, high intake of fat. That's correct. correct. So how does then, let's then talk about, because there's good fats and there's bad fats, and I think that's another misconception with the ketogenic diet. Hey, great, I can just go eat whatever fats that I want. It's a high-fat diet. So just from a health perspective first, let's not even talk about weight loss, but let's then transition into weight loss. But since we're talking about health, let's talk about the difference then between consuming a lot of you know healthy fats versus what you would consider bad fats, and then the associated risk. Right. So typically, as you you know your observations have been my observations. You know you see these people on the Atkins diet, and they're eating 14 cheeseburgers a day. That ultimately ends up stopping, by the way, um, because as you know, ketones. There's a feedback loop, and ketones they send a satiety signal to the brain. Okay. So you end up talking to somebody and says, oh. I'm on this new diet, it's this Atkins diet, um, and I'm having six bacon double cheeseburgers a day, no bread. Then you talk to them in six weeks and you go, how the bacon double cheeseburgers? They go, mm, I sort of don't want that anymore, right? And the reason why that happens, and I have this conversation with my patients continually, um, twice today already, um, is that in addition to the, the, the ketones sending um, a satiety signal to the brain, what ends up happening? Explain that so people understand that. Oh, it shuts down. It shuts down. Um, there's an area of the brain called the hypothalamus, and it will literally temper your hunger. There's a satiety signal there. There's a satiety center there where if you were to, to stimulate it, right, your hunger is going to go down. There's also a, an eat uh, center in the hypothalamus where if yeah. you stimulate it, you'd be ravenous. Okay. So it does send a satiety signal, um, the presence of these ketones, which is why if you use oral ketones, you'll notice that you're, you've tempered your hunger. If your body has been conditioned by virtue of a traditional ketogenic diet, a modified ketogenic diet, if you are living in a low insulin state and you are preferentially burning fat as opposed to sugar, carbohydrate, there's really no motivation for you to eat anymore, right? So like I always tell my patients, you're not addicted to the line of cocaine in the refrigerator at 10 o'clock at night. Why? Because despite how lean you are, you're a lean guy. I'm a lean guy, right? You got about 100,000 calories of fat underneath your skin. You do too. Mm -hmm. So if your body is used to using that, it's not chasing after the line of cocaine in the refrigerator at 10 right. o'clock at night because it's just chasing after it here. So you're going to not be, you're not going to need to eat all of this fat any longer. Any food, your your hunger is going to go down. All right, your appetite's going to go down, which is one of the problems with the ketogenic diet, in in my opinion, one of the things that I have to coax my patients into, I have to push them to eat. Why do I push them to eat? Because I want them not to shed any muscle. So, so, so here's an interesting thing, because if you look at it and you'd say, okay, here, the basic concept of a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet is to go ahead and burn fat as a source of fuel. Now, so ideally we all have, like you said, an excess amount of stored body fat, even the leanest of people. So 
if we're looking at one hand, dietary sources of fat, right? We're, we're making this transition now, trying to teach our body to burn fat as fuel. What does that transition look like of going and consuming a lot of dietary fats to train our body to burn fat as fuel? And at some point making this transition where, to your point, we're not eating as much as we were before because we're trying to get our body to preferentially burn stored body fat as, as a source of fuel versus dietary fat. So what does that balance look like? And is there some sort of transition where, because you still want the calories, because to your point, you don't want to lose the lean muscle. Lean muscles are metabolic engine. So what is that? Is there a shift? Is there something where at a certain point people make this transition? What we see um, in our clinic, and actually, let me answer real quickly, okay, in two sentences about the, the inflammatory fats versus the anti-inflammatory fats. In my clinic and in a tra in traditional ketogenic diet, despite the fact that people are typically eating bacon, you know, bacon double cheeseburgers and things like that, that is not what you should be doing. Right. Because in spite of the weight loss, you will lose weight. You will lose body fat, okay, and some muscle, but you'll lose body fat. And you'll have a very, very nice um, aesthetic appearance. If you look at your uh, inflammatory markers, they'll all be through the roof. And we do see that in some of our aggressive red meat eaters. So I don't want you getting your dietary fat from red meats because that is inflammatory fat. I wanted olive oil, coconut oil, avocados, nuts, et cetera, et cetera. That was the, that was the previous that was, question. That was the original I just question. Wanted to, I just wanted to make sure. So there is, sure, um, you will notice that your lipid profile improves even if you're eating bacon cheeseburgers. I will tell you, your lipid profile will improve. However, if you look under the hood, and you look at things like CRP and IL-6, okay, tumor necrosis factors, so TNF-alpha, things like that. Some of these more esoteric inflammatory markers, they'll all be up. So you have to be careful. And then I'll so, answer so, your next so, question. So, so going back to that, so we can wrap that one up, which is the health concerns. So a lot of the typical health concerns that people have when they're out there Googling and saying, you know, it's bad for your liver or it's bad for your gallbladder, eating the right types of fats, the way that you follow a ketogenic diet, is important for eliminating some of those health concerns. That is absolutely correct. Um, I understand where people are saying, I understand the genesis of these comments, but the thing about it is that if you, if you do it correctly, it's an anti-inflammatory diet. It's a low glycemic index, anti-inflammatory, low carbohydrate diet, which theoretically reduces the incidence of all these diseases. And I always say that all these diseases are the same. You can call them cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative diseases. And there's plenty of data out there uh, that the oral ketone products, um, the beta-hydroxybutyrate products, um, the MC2 oil-based products, those are going to be protective of these diseases. They are. And the big one is neurodegenerative disease. We know that for a fact already. We know that for a fact. Um, there's data on um, the ketogenic diet and Alzheimer's disease. So, so you're saying a lot of the neurological diseases that following a ketogenic diet or a modified ketogenic diet can help, maybe not prevent, but slow down some of these aging processes that ultimately lead to these diseases. Yep. And there's plenty of data on it.